Ah, stinging nettle. You bugger. Ah. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all safe and well at the moment. I want to make a video on the Kodak Vest Pocket Camera. This one here that was kindly sent to me by a friend of mine called Jason. And this particular model I believe is 1915. These cameras were introduced around about 1912. Now this is all stuff that I've read online. I know nothing about these cameras whatsoever. So I'm just reading the stuff and spilling it out to you guys um, from what I've read. Whether it's right, whether it's wrong, go off and do your own research, but this is the stuff that I found online. So these cameras were introduced around about 1912, and this particular model was the second model. Um, it's a folding camera, and this was introduced around about 1915. Now, they were called the Soldier Vest Pocket Camera because in World War I, the soldiers would go off on the front lines and they would take these cameras with them, stick them in their vest pockets, and when they're down in the trenches with their pals, they'd pull it out and say, hey guys, let's get a picture for the record, and they'd take a picture. Um, what they did with it from there, I don't know, possibly um, take the rolls of film back home and, and afterwards and, and develop. Um, but unfortunately, some of them I read that uh, the images were getting leaked into the press. Now, the governments didn't like this because it was showing what was going on inside the trenches. And uh, also, I think for the loved ones back home, it wasn't too great because loved ones back home were seeing graphic details of war. So the governments turned around and said, right, we're banning all the cameras, no more cameras on the front line. And that's what they did. So whether or not soldiers actually sneaked some of these um, onto the front line after that, I don't know. But if you go online and search uh, World War I trench photographs, the chances are some of those, chances are a lot of those images were taken on something nice and small uh, like this. So this particular model is the autographic model. And they say it's the autographic model because there's a, a small stylus here. It's quite tricky to get out. There it comes. Oh, come out, you uh, There it is. There's a small stylus and you open up that little window when you're taking your photographs and you inscribe your details on, expose it to the light, which it's already doing, close it, stick the stylus back in, carry on. That way you've got a record on, on the actual negatives of what the photograph was or the date or whatever. It's got two shutter speeds, a 25th of a second and a 50th of a second. And it's also got a bulb mode we all know what that is and it's got a time function mode as well now the time function mode is pretty cool because it's like having a cable release um, once it's in time i can't see it to put me bins on i'll tell you what my eyes are getting terrible right there you go time mode and once you click the shutter it stays down until you release it pretty cool for some long exposures so uh yeah it's got those functions on the shutter the apertures go from, I believe it's F32, which it says on here, there's no numbers on here at all, it just says cloud marine, distant view, average view, near view, and portrait. And it's got this funky little tiny viewfinder here. This one's quite clean, but it is difficult to look through. Um, so you can have it in portrait mode, or you can flip it around, flip the little viewfinder around there to landscape view as well. Now, I've got a roll of film that I got from Nick and Trick Photography in Folkestone. Um, it's called a Rare Pan 400. So this is the film that I'm going to be loading into this camera. I've never used this camera before. That's the only film I've got. So this is going to be a journey for me and for you guys as well, if you're interested in this, of loading the camera, shooting it as well. Um, you load the camera by somehow putting it on the feed-up spool and then sliding the whole film into there. You can't take the back of the camera off. It's got to slip into this groove, the whole film. Uh, it's a 127 film as well. I've never shot a 127 film, um, but I know I can develop it and, uh, and sort of print it. So that's a little bit about this camera. Uh, let's load a roll of film into it, then we'll go out and shoot it and see what we can get. So this is going to be a giggle. I've not got a clue. How, well, I have got a clue, but <laughs> I've never done this before. Um,
Don't tell me that was frame number one. Oh, it bloody well was. That's oh, two, so I've just gone past one. Oh, I missed a frame. I'm going to go in the dark room and pull that frame back. I don't want to miss a frame. <laughs> this is weird. Um, get in there, you little sod. Oh, you bugger. Are we in? No, we're not in. All right. That's done. This. Lock. There we go. Dots. Two. It's three dots, and then you line up to number one. I'm not sure if I'll put this upside down or what. Can't be. I don't know. Let's go and shoot it. That was all fun and games, trying to put that film into the camera. I found it uh, pretty tricky, especially for the first time doing it. Uh, trying to roll it onto that feed-up spool and then trying to get it into that, into that slit. Um, <laughs> I guess that went on for about 15 minutes. You didn't see that on camera, did you, on video? But uh, anyway, I'm down here at the cycle path or the um, little country park where I live, near where I live. Got the camera inside my pocket, inside my vest pocket there, got my coat. And I'm going to go and take some photographs. Good or bad, I don't really care. I'm just going to enjoy the walk and get some photographs on this film. I'm sure I'll get something. I'm a little bit worried because I'm shooting a 400 speed film. Now in an ideal world, if I had an FP4, say at 125, you shooting a 16th, uh, shooting a F16 and a 125th of a second, that'd be a sunny 16 rule. I'm guaranteed that I'll be okay. But this is a 50th of a second with a 400 speed film. So I'm going to, just carry, carry on, I'm going to shoot at the shutter speed of 50th on the camera, leave it on cloudy marine mode, and when I get back, I'm going to throw it into a stand development. That way, I know I'm going to get something out of the film rather than try and, you know, underdevelop or overdevelop. Uh, albeit with a stand development, I'm going to start, you know, compressing my contrast a bit and, 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 uh, and Getting some more contrast your getting some more contrast your images and maybe that I wanted, but at least I might get something. So that's my plan, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk around this country park and I'll show you some of the scenes I'm gonna photograph. Hopefully they'll be alright. Now like I showed you at the start, I've got a small viewfinder there, but I can't see nothing through it. It's um I could just a bit, I could just vision, I could just make out a slight picture. So I guess this is just point and shoot time, you know. But uh, that's what I'm going to take a picture of over there, of the river and those little trees clinging over it. Let's give it a go. All I've got to do is press that button and it should work. I've just advanced to frame number three, and I'm going to write. I'm going to open this window here, or this door. Now that is letting light <laughs> fly. Sorry guys, I was a fly with Nami. Oh. So I've got a stylus and this little tiny door's open now. That's the backing paper there. I can write on that what I'm doing. So let's try it out and see what it looks like in the development. I'm just going to scribble on there. S flab. S L F S F L A B. I scribed that in quite hard. I put a couple of scratches either side. Shine it out to the light. I think I'll have to get it in some sunlight. Maybe. Does that work? I don't know. And hopefully, I think the way that works is it thins the backing paper down and uh, the light from opening that door gets onto that part of the film and puts my 
inscribing on there. So uh, we'll soon see when we get back to developing. Sorry about that fly, that's done me. I actually swallowed a fly. It went straight in my throat as I was talking. Um, let's get a photograph. Excuse me guys, do you mind if I take a photograph of you? I'm shooting this old war camera. That was a couple of nice lads just out taking some photographs of wildlife and stuff. And uh, I thought it'd be nice to get a couple of people on the film as opposed to all the water and stuff that I've been shooting. So uh, there's one more place I want to go. I'm on frame number eight. I really don't know how many I've got left. That was my last shot. Stop, yeah, eight frames I got out of that 127 film. So, wow. I wonder how expensive that was back in the day, because if you only got eight shots, but then I suppose those guys weren't like we are today, snapping everything that moves. They would have just taken a couple of shots maybe on one day. Who knows, a few days later when something else was worth taking a shot of, take another one. Interesting. Let's go back. I'm going to put this film in a stand development and hopefully get something out of it. So I'm just going to go and load uh, this film into the tank. Now this is a normal spiral that I use when I'm developing. That's 35mm. I'll put it up. That's medium format. In between, I've got my 127 size. So uh, this spiral does 35mm, 127 and 120. So let's go and put this in the tank and do stand development. Hopefully we've got some pictures. So I developed the film in Rodnol, I used 10 millilitres of Rodnol and did a stand development or a semi-stand development, whatever you want to call it. Just inversions a couple of times, left it for a half hour and then inverted one more time and left it for another half hour, bought the film out, negatives came out all right. So um, went in the dark room, made a few prints. I did a contact print first just so I could see all the negatives and, and you know how, how well the camera performed, I suppose. And I did notice some light leaks and you can see from a DSLR photograph of the contact sheet on the light leaks are on the frame number one. You can see them at the bottom there. And on the next frame where I open the back to inscribe S-Flab on the back of the backing paper, uh, you can just see where the light has burned through the backing paper very, very slightly, but there's no, um, there's no image on there at all of me scratching the film. So uh, I probably got that wrong. Maybe someone can let us know in the comments how that was done because I thought that if I scratched deep enough, uh, it would make the backing paper thinner where I've inscribed and burn it into the film. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I've never used this camera before, so um, it is what it is. Let's have a look at the other photographs I took. So that was my first print. This is all point and shoot. I wasn't really looking through the viewfinder because I couldn't see much, but that was my first one there. Um, I quite like that. Then I saw those two guys. I thought I've got to make a print of one of those. Now this one was, um, I had to use a contrast five filter on this because their faces were going quite dark. Um, on the enlarger under different grades. So I just ended up doing a contrast fire filter and it came out all right. I've managed to keep the detail in, in their faces, keep their faces looking white, if you like. And uh, yeah, I quite like that print as well. It was quite nice to see two guys out together 
um, at this time taking photographs and you know just enjoying themselves and that one there I printed as well quite like that reflections of the branches on the on the river and uh, again just all point and shoot stuff so overall that was a good experience shooting the vest pocket camera I've never shot 127 film before so that was good fun and I was I was amazed to see uh, you know getting some quality prints out of this old camera it's over 100 years old and for anyone interested there is a lens there's a bit of glass which sits behind the aperture and behind the leaf shutter there so there is a lens uh, you can see it if you take the back of this off You'll, this little bit here spins off you can see the lens underneath but uh, yeah all good fun anyway guys I hope you like the video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel give this video a big thumbs up share it with your mates and stuff like that and uh, don't forget if you want to support me on Patreon you can thanks very much for the comments the likes the subscribers and everyone that takes interest in what I'm doing and uh, keep shooting be safe I'll catch you next time just got done by stinging nettle right let's get that one over there Come on, uh. Ah. Uh.